Hi everybody and welcome to this short video on creating a executor role in a SQL Server database. My name is Gethin Ellis. Uh, you can follow my blog over at gethinellis.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I am Gethin underscore Ellis and do feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn too. Now, database roles in a SQL Server database have a very useful function. They allow you to give a set of permissions to a group of users or logins. You, from, and from them and using them, you can create a very robust security model, which makes managing your security mo model much easier as well. So you can set up a role for, let's say, for example, your sales team, give the various permissions needed against the database to your sales team and then as sales members want the same set of permissions as, as their colleagues, you can add them into that role. So you can build up a robust security model. Now, in SQL Server, out of the box, SQL Server, a SQL Server database will have several roles built in, including the database owner or the DB underscore owner role, which in which case you can pretty much do anything you like to the database. You can drop and create objects, you can drop and create users, you get a very high level of permissions against the database. Uh, DB underscore data reader, if you're a member of that role, you'll be able to run select statements against various tables and views or all the tables and views in our database. And if you've got DB data writer, then you can do inserts and updates against tables in a SQL Server database. But there's no executor role. If someone wants to be able to execute all store procedures or functions in the database, you have to go away and give that permission individually or you can create a role to do so. Now, <clears throat> you can create your own DB executor role. It's a nice, simple way of allowing your users to execute all store procedures and functions without having to give them permission on the underlying tables. So lots of applications get developed where store procedures are used for all data access. You can simply give your users the ability to execute stored procedures and they can only then execute those stored procedures or carry out the functionality that those stored procedures implement. Using this model is not granular enough for some and that's okay but it does have some uses and it can be very useful in certain circumstances. So in this short demo we will look at creating one of those and see how we can use the DB executor role. So for this demo I'm going to use my database that's called PLFF, which stands for Premier League Fantasy Football. It's a database I've been uh, using to store some uh, results and things from various football matches that I'm then using to try and make predictions on uh, based off previous results. Now, I have got a nice script here that, that it does a variety of different things, including calculating the expected goals for the next Premier League game. Now, in here, I've got Crystal Palace and Tottenham. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details of the script in this post, but I'm going to wrap all this up in a store procedure so I can execute the store procedure, pass in the home team, pass in the away team, and it will calculate the expected away goals and expected home goals of each team. Therefore, giving you an idea of what you can expect the score to be. Now, I've wrapped all this in a store procedure and I've called my store procedure Prem Predictor. <clears throat> now, the purpose of this demo is to show the creation of the DB Executor role. So, if I go to the security folder in my database, expand roles, and then expand database roles, you can see that we've got a list of the default database roles that come with a SQL Server database, including data writer, data reader, and DB owner that uh, we spoke about in the slides uh, just a few seconds ago. So the first thing I'm going to do, I am going to create in my PLFF database a DB executor role. So I'm just going to use the create role, give it a name called DB executor, uh, and I'm going to click on execute. Come back completely successfully. If I refresh my database roles, you can see there I have now got a db underscore executor role. Now, whilst I'm still in this database, I am going to grant execute permissions to my db executor role. And just grant execute two is giving across the board execute permissions to that role. So we execute that, command completed successfully. 
Now, what I want to do, I want to share this thought procedure with my friend Ian, who's also very interested in football results and trying to make predictions on uh, future matches based off past performance. So I'm going to create a login called Ian with a password, and I'm going to change Ian's password there. Oh, I'll keep it the same to password, nice and safe. Uh, and I'm just going to create the login. Click on Execute. Login has been created. And then I'm going to create in my PLF F database my user Ian. I'm going to map it to my login. So I'm going to execute that. So I've created Ian. I'm now going to attempt to log in as Ian. So I'm going to open up a new connection in Object Explorer. I'm going to put Ian in there and I'm going to pop Ian's password in. And I'm going to click on Connect and Ian goes in. So I'll now expand the databases. I'll drop down to my PLF database. We can see that Ian can't see any tables. Uh, and then if Ian tries to execute the prime predictor store procedure, so we'll open up a new query window. We can see there we're connected as Ian. We do a select star from, and we'll just pick one of my results tables here. We'll do prem stats. We get an error saying select permission was denied on prem stats. Now, if I go up here to my connected session, look at the store procedures, we can see in there is a store procedure called prem predictor. We'll try and get Ian to execute prem predictor. So to execute it, we call the store procedure, then we pass in the home team, which we will look at Cardiff here, and then the away team. We'll look at Brighton. And if we try and execute, we get an error saying permission was died, denied on the object. So as it stands, I've got a login called Ian, a user called Ian, but Ian can't do anything in my database. So the next step for me is to add Ian to the executor role in the PLFF database. So I'm going to execute my statement here. That has added Ian in. Now when I return to Ian's session, try and run my select statement, access denied. But when I execute the prem predictor, passing in the two teams I want to know the, 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 the expected goals for, I click on execute. And it runs the select statement and returns results. So all Ian has permission on is the ability to execute from his DB executor role permission. He's able to execute my store procedure and get the data back. He's not able to affect any objects in the database. He doesn't need any permissions on the underlying tables. And we can see that according to my model anyway, the expected home goals or goals for Cardiff is 1.265. The expected away goals is 1.11. So it could be a very tight game between Cardiff and Brighton tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this short video on creating a, an executor role in SQL Server. My name is Gethin Ellis. Uh, I'll see you for the next video.